Hey you guys, it has been a while since I filmed a video. I feel a little bit rusty, but I just wanted to come on and talk to you just casually to catch you up with what's been going on in my life, check on you, how you're doing. You guys, it's freaking cold. Um, it snowed last night and um, I just don't, I don't do cold. So last year around this time, if you guys have been following me for a while, I was in California, so I totally missed out on winter. So I'm already plotting and planning how I can escape winter here. But you know, in the Midwest, sometimes we just totally skip fall and go to winter. So it snowed and I'm cold and I'm not liking it. So anyway, first thing, the reason why you guys haven't seen me for a, a little bit is because my grandmother passed away recently. A few days before she passed away, I was up at the hospital back and forth with my mother, you know, with COVID just kind of taking turns. Um, and while it is sad to see her go, there's a few things about her that are going to be incorporated into the message that I want to leave you with today. Again, just a casual little chit chat to catch up. So my grandmother in 2005 had a massive stroke, massive, massive stroke that um, paralyzed her on her whole left side, slurred her speech like she just had a whole host of problems, seizures, other things, complications from that stroke, but she made it through. So we got to spend another, what, 15 or so years with my grandmother. That's time that we, you know, count it as a blessing because we could have lost her back then. And um, so that's one reason why I'm saying it's bittersweet. We could have lost her a long time ago, but we didn't. Um, secondly, she was always like, you know, how you say that people are positive and they are fun and just the life of the party and never had any hate and very accepting and loving and, and they say that and you're like uh-uh that ain't true but my, my grandma truly was that she was truly accepting truly blessed she literally would give you anything that she had like literally to the point where she had done that several times over um given everything that she had to help other people so she ended up having a heart attack, a massive heart attack. And that wasn't really what put her out. So she had a massive heart attack and she was stable, serious, but stable. But then in the hospital, she had another heart attack and that is what did her in. So let me tell you a few eerie things about my grandmother and this passing. So she my mom had took her on an outing because she couldn't stop she couldn't sit still she didn't let anything stop her so my mom spends a lot of time with her and took her on an outing she wasn't feeling like herself so around 6 30 p.m on this day i don't even remember my my mother called the ambulance to take her to the hospital that same time her sister had also been taken to the hospital got admitted for a serious issue as well so this little psychic sister bond. So not only that, she has living brothers and sisters that also had like a knee issue or a leg issue. I'm not making this up guys. They all had something that happened around the same time. So that was the first thing that was kind of eerie. They just have a bond that no matter where they are in the world, it just can't be shaken. So then when I was in the room with my grandmother and then her sister was admitted to the hospital, you know, we were trying to decide what to do because she, um, her organs were failing and we didn't, we knew that she was such a fighter. She wouldn't have wanted certain things done. Um, but we didn't change anything. We didn't stop the fight. Um, and her sister called the one that got admitted to the hospital. And so I put them on FaceTime and my grandma had a uh, breathing assistance. Her, um, lungs had been impacted by her, um, organ failure. Um, and so she could squeeze your hand and she's alert all up into the time where, you know, she had the tube, so she really couldn't talk, but she, um, was able to hear her sister's voice. And you know, it was a very sad time because her sister wanted to be there but couldn't and so on and so forth. My Aunt Reese that gave me all those awesome plants, you see. Um, so as soon as Aunt Reed got off the phone with her, 
it was just a little while later i was just sitting in a hotel and or in her hospital room and she passed she passed peacefully um so she really didn't suffer she kind of probably went out the way that she wanted but the minute that she heard her sister's voice you know how you people just hold on i felt like she knew she could be at peace from hearing her sister's voice so very sad situation now i want to talk to you about a thing that will ne i will never forget about my grandmother uh, and, and about intuition because i want it to be a message for you to honor yourself because sometimes your intuition well, all the time, your intuition is there to protect you. So another quick story about my grandmother. Um, before she had, the, she had a procedure in 2005 and that procedure went wrong and that's how she had the stroke. When we were sitting in church, I think it was the weekend before she had the procedure, I was just sitting by her and we were just talking. Um, and I just remember her saying, baby, I just don't feel right. I don't think that I should do this. And I said, Grandma, if you feel that way, then I don't think that you should do this. And she went ahead and did it anyway. And you could say a whole bunch of woulda, shoulda, coulda, right? But at the end of the day, she did feel something strongly in her heart that was telling her that she shouldn't have, she didn't feel right about the procedure, yet she went on with the procedure. And so I've always wondered if that was her intuition trying to protect her from something that wasn't right for her at that time again we'll never know but i'm sharing this because a lot of times we get that little voice in our head and we will let other people talk us out of it or we let our mind talk us out of it and we end up doing something that's not for our highest and best good so i just share that story as a reminder that once you hone in on that intuitive voice it is protecting you it is guiding you and, it, and you can trust it and nine times out of ten if it's not leading you with to harm's way you have a minute to sit and you have a minute to think about things and think about if you're making the right decision so she's gone it's sad but again I love the time that I spent with her and particularly right before I went to California I got to spend a lot of time with her we got to do a road trip together um, with the, uh, some my mom, my sister. So we've, we've had good times with her. She's always an active, involved grandmother. So those of you that have good grandmothers, you know what I'm talking about. All right, second thing that I wanted to talk about, and I actually wanted to talk to you guys about this before my grandmother even passed away, but the when I had planned to film this for you guys, that's when I started going in and out of the hospital. And it's about peace. And I want to share this because i'm wrapping up with a client you know everybody comes to me for private coaching for different things it could be some people want to level up and make a lot of money and learn how to do that um, some people want a better marriage a better relationship love um, so this particular client we are wrapping up our three months together and we were talking about her results and one thing that she said was that life felt peaceful and a lot of the work that we had done with her was on setting boundaries setting healthy boundaries with people and um no, go, coming back to herself knowing who she was what she wanted what would life look like if she was living her authentic self and so a lot of the work that we did got her to the place where she was able to stand up for herself she was able to know what she wanted and not be um shaking by the people in her life or the circumstances in her life and really stay the course to start to develop a practice upon which she could love people, set boundaries and know what healthy love, healthy boundaries, healthy relationships um, and living authentically from the heart looked like. She was like, it's so peaceful. And she was like, I felt feel like something is wrong. And my clients in private coaching know i don't just teach you about how to shift the energy i also teach you about how to use things like you know tarot cards oracle cards crystals and more and she had started um incorporating crystals a lot more into her practice and was saying that she thought it was the crystals but at the end of the day that piece felt strange to her because she was like it's boring i'm waiting for something to happen and I had to take a step back with her and say, that is normal. 
There is so many people, and you could be one of them, that is always living with some sort of drama or trauma or attracting mess. And it doesn't have to be big mess. It could just be to the fact where your life is always going through ups and downs. It's never steady. It's never peaceful. It's never happy. It's never content. And that's not normal. The reason why my client began to experience peace is yes, partly because of the crystals, which she attributed all of it to the crystals until we had a conversation, but it's not just that. Crystals are tools that you leverage to help you do the work. What had happened is she had done the work. She had done the work to get rid of people that didn't respect her, to set boundaries with the people that she loved, that she was developing codependent relationships with. She had taken the time to work on who she was as an individual and to see what her energy was, her wants and her needs. And when you do that, it's very clear for you to cut out or set a boundary between your energy and other people's energy. And what you find when you're doing that work is a lot of the time when you feel unrest, you don't feel content, you don't feel peace. It's not all the time your life. It's the crap that you allow in your life, the negativity that you allow in your life, the decisions that you make when you're not brave enough to honor that feeling in your heart that's saying that you know that something or somebody is not for you, but you don't have the courage and the strength to let it go. And once she started to do that, she started to understand what peace was like. And peace is boring ask anybody in their life. I don't have drama. It's not because I'm different than anybody else, but it's because I have a really strong sense of myself and I have a really strong sense of who I'm willing to interact with, who I'm willing to share my time and my space and my energy with. And because of that, my life is peaceful. It's content. I don't have drama. I don't attract people trying to be energetic vampires. I don't have that type of stuff in my life. And it's because I've done a lot of inner work and I continue to do a lot of inner work and self-reflection, the same things that I teach my clients. There are modules that I share with my private clients that scientifically explain to you how if you're not willing to do the work to be brave and set good boundaries in your life, no matter how much work that you do, no matter how hard, how hard that you try, your potential is not going to be as high as it would be had you been ruthless and had you had integrity about what you wanted to see in your life and the people that you wanted to um, interact with in your life. And the last thing that I want to say about this is it's not me being delusional saying that life is going to be all fairy tales and life is going to be all happy because the passing of my grandmother ties into this story what you will find though is that you're not having hurt and drama and chaos and negative blocks and ups and downs in life because you are attached to the wrong people or the wrong circumstances or you don't know who you are the ups and downs that come through life are the ups and downs that come through life because life is never constant. Things come and things go. Those impact your life. Those are things that you have no control. Those are things that you have no control over. And those are the things that are going to come in and test your faith and test if you're strong and test your relationships. But what you won't have when you do the inner work to gain peace and continue contentment and your middle path and clarity in your core is drama in your relationships and drama in your life and ups and downs and trauma and chaos and all of this other stuff such as negativity that you attract because you don't do the work to align with your truth and with your purpose. So that is my little message for today. I wanted to tell you guys I'm back. I just feel like I have like so many video ideas for you. Like while I was just going through this, I was doing a lot of reflection, a lot of reading um, some books that I've read in the past and just picked up new things. And that just sparked ideas for me to share with you. So you will be seeing that. One big thing that's coming up that I'll be sharing with you very, very soon is a mentorship. I am going to take, um, 
some very determined and very committed individuals on a spiritual journey, an eight month spiritual journey where I'm doing a mentorship and I'm teaching you everything that you need to know to create a solid base and a solid foundation in your spiritual practice. So again, you know how you can use spiritual tools in order to create a better life for yourself. So just stay tuned for that. Um, and then also I'm back to work. I took about a week off just to, you know, grieve and, um, you know, when somebody passes, there's so much work to do. It's so weird how we have to do so much work at a time where we're grieving. It's crazy. But I am accepting private clients. Before this, I had my calendar open to the end of 2020. And I still do. What is there? About 70, 60 some days left in this year to finish off strong and then also move into the next year. So um, if you want to know what it feels like to not only develop a, a spiritual base, but also to learn how to develop a better mindset, to get rid of limiting beliefs, to crush through negative patterns, to understand yourself better so that you can learn how to set goals and visions and dreams for yourself that are in alignment with a purpose and what is really going to bring you fulfillment. And then learn how to practically set goals so that you get stuff done. And you're not just getting stuff done because this is what society says, your parents, your spouse, whatever. This is you getting getting stuff done because it feels authentic and purposeful for you, then you may want to work with me through private coaching. I'm still accepting private clients. I will leave all the information somewhere here and in the description box of this video so that you can go and you can learn more about coaching. It is by application only and that's just to make sure that we are a good fit to make sure I can truly help you on the things that you want to work on and you want to accomplish. And um, if you find that we're a good fit. We just get on a free call. There is no obligation. I'm not a saleswoman. I'm not trying to sell you anything. It's just to make sure that we have the information we need, make sure you feel comfortable, and then we can get started right away because I do have slots open available in my calendar. I open up more slots since I was unavailable for the past week. So again, if you would like to work with me, private coaching, doing that inner work to set a good foundation for yourself that will last you a lifetime, that will keep you steady through ups and downs that will let you learn how to not only create abundance in your outer world like I've told you my clients have but also to create that peace and contentment and purpose and fulfillment inner with by doing the inner work then you are probably a good candidate to work with me so I will see you in future videos make sure you also keep an eye out for this mentorship that I'm going to be dropping soon um, because if you've always wanted a guide to help you through a spiritual journey, I, I always wanted that. I wanted like a personal mentor and I would even ask people to do it for me and they wouldn't do it. But I know that some of you want that and need that. You want somebody to take you step by step through spirituality and help you develop a practice and purpose and help you understand the laws of the universe and how to use them for your favor. So watch out for that mentorship eight month eight month mentorship not eight weeks it's eight months me really taking you on a deep journey so that you are prepared to to go forward after that and then private coaching helps you do both it helps you do the spiritual work but the spiritual work is more of like a surface foundation and the deep dive when you were working with me privately is actually applying spirituality applying principles that have been proven to help you shift who you are to your core in order to actually live a better life so that's for you if you want to experience change and transformation on a deep level that's not only spiritual but it's also very internal and very personal discovery, personal mastery oriented. All right. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.